In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to replace a slab door. That means we are installing just the door. We're going to leave the frame intact. We're going to take out the existing door. We're going to cut, shape, drill, mortise the new door so that it fits perfectly and works properly. And this will work for an interior door or an exterior door. Now the difference with an interior door is that they're easier because you're not dealing with a door bottom, a threshold, or a deadbolt. Other than that, the procedure is the same. And there are 17 steps in this process, but don't get caught up on the steps or the numbers. The point of the steps is to show you that this is a systematic process that you can learn and you can duplicate. You learn how to install a door like this, wow! You can save a lot of money installing your own doors, or you can make a lot of money as a door installer. And at the end, I'm going to let you know the best way to practice these skills. So let's get into it. So the first step is to measure the door, make sure we're getting the right door. So you see this door is 35 and 3 quarters. That means it's, we're going to get a 36 inch door. And the height is 79 and a quarter. So that means we're going to get an 80 inch door. And it's an inch and 3 quarters thick. So that's what we're getting. This is a flush slab solid core door. These currently cost about 125 bucks at the local Home Depot. It's 36 by 80 by inch and three quarters. So I'm gonna remove the door and check all the hinges. So depending on the situation, you could just pop the hinge pins out and remove the door that way. Or you can put a wedge underneath the door like this. And I just take the hinges off the door. I leave them on the jam. See, all the screws are out and I have the wedge there and the door still doesn't move. But it's very easy to, man to maneuver it now. So with the door off, I want to check all the hinges, make sure nothing's loose. I want them flush with the jam. And then I want to check everything. Check all the screws, make sure nothing's loose. Sometimes if you have an old crappy jam, it could be split. You might have to move the hinge a little bit, or if the hinge is sticking out this way, or if it's recessed too deep, you might want to shim them and get them flush. You want your hinges sturdy so they're not moving, and you want them flush with the jam. Sometimes they don't have a threshold, or sometimes the threshold is in terrible shape. So before you do anything, you have to make sure that you have a threshold and it's actually working. This one looks fine. And another thing is the threshold has to be higher than the area in which the door swings. This door swings in. So your threshold has to be higher than your floor. Your threshold also has to be higher than back here because you can't have a door that's rubbing on the floor. And if the door swings out, the threshold has to be higher than the outside. So this one looks fine, so we'll move on. But if not, you'd have to either replace the threshold or add a threshold. You gotta do that first before you start fitting your door. We're gonna measure the jam in three places. What I recommend is put the tape right over the hinge and then go right to the edge of the jam. So see, we're right there at 36. Then do the same thing in the middle, 36 right there. Same thing in the bottom, or 36 right there. Now here's the easiest way to determine the width of your door. When the door is installed, here's another door. You want about an eighth of an inch gap all the way around. So if you have an eighth on this side and an eighth on that side, that's a quarter inch. This is 36 inches and subtract a quarter inch. So you want your door to be 35 and three quarters. Now you want to measure it in three places and whatever the longest measurement is, subtract a quarter inch from there. You don't want to subtract a quarter inch from your shortest measurement. Subtract a quarter inch from your longest measurement because it's better to be too long and, and be able to shave it than to be too narrow. If you're just starting out, here's what I would recommend. Measure it and subtract an eighth inch. It's 
probably not going to fit, but you'll be able to hang the door and then you'll be able to test fit it and then shave as you go. Because if you make a door too small, it can really be problematic. But if the door is too big, you can always shave it down. Now we want to check the height. We're going to put our tape down there on the threshold and run it up. So we're at 79 and a half. Put our tape measure down there on the strike side. And we're at the same thing, 79 and a half. Now we're going to be putting a door bottom on the bottom of this door, which means we're going to be cutting it. We're also going to need an eighth inch gap there. So our height doesn't have to be perfect. For the first fitting of the height, we just have to get the door in and make sure it fits. So here's my rule. Whatever the longest measurement is from top to bottom, subtract a half inch and that will be the first cut. So since we're at 79 and a half, we're gonna cut the door to 79. Now we're gonna measure our hinge locations. Close the hinge, put the tape measure right up against the top of the jam. Put the tape measure on the top of the jam, to the top of that hinge is six and three quarters. Now we're gonna drop it down an eighth of an inch because look, see when I drop it down an eighth inch, that mimics the eighth inch gap we want on the top of our door. So since the top of the hinge is at six and three quarters, we drop it down and it's six and five eighths. So our top hinge is six and five eighths. Do not try to measure the distance between hinges. Just go everything from the top jam. 37 and 11 sixteenths. You drop it down, it's 37 and 9 sixteenths. And we've got 68 and 11 sixteenths. So this will be 68 and 9 sixteenths. And I recommend keeping a pad with you or at least a post-it note so you can write these things down so you're not running back and forth, double checking everything. Now we're gonna check the jam for square. So we take the carpenter's square, push it up against the hinge side, and then push it up against the top jam until something hits. That rests nice and even along the top. That means our jam is square, so we do not have to worry about shaping the top of the door. And I like to get my cutting station set up. The drop cloths are more just to protect the door when I lay it down. So. Get a nice area, get your tools somewhere where you can have access. You don't want to be stepping all over everything. When you're getting ready to shape a door, the first thing you do is shape the top if you have to. Our top is square, so we don't have to. But if you did, the first thing you need to do is figure out which is the top and which is the bottom of the door. Sometimes these flush doors are marked top and bottom. So we know that's the top. If we had to shape the top of the door, that's the first thing we would do. It's exactly 80, so I make a mark here at 79. Now you could make a mark on the other side, put a straight edge down there and draw a line. Imagine if you had to shape the top of the door and now the door is crooked. If you shape the top of the door, you always measure from the hinge side. And then what I do is just use my speed square. I put my pencil on that line, which in this case is one inch. Just stick it in there and pull it right across. Before I start shaping a door, I always want to make sure it's oriented properly. The door is like this. I know my hinges are on this side, so I know my top hinge pin is up here on the left because the door opens this way. So I need to know where's my bottom. I know this is my bottom because I just cut it. And so I want my hinges. My top hinge pin is going to be right there so the door opens up like this. So I put a piece of blue tape or you could just mark it with a T. So you know where your hinge is, that's very important. Now I have to take a quarter inch off of the side of this door. Almost all 36 inch doors have to be cut to 35 and three quarters. Whenever possible, we wanna do our cuts, make our marks on the hinge side, because those are least likely to be seen if there's any mistakes made. And also it'll give you maximum strength for your lock. I don't really need to measure a quarter inch. 
I could just hold my pencil here against my finger so it doesn't move and I can just go like that and that'll give me a quarter inch. I also have a quarter inch on my speed square. I just hold it right against here and I just go like that and that gives me a nice straight line all the way down. If I have a quarter inch or more, I use my circular saw. If I have less than a quarter inch, I will use the planer. So when I have to cut a quarter inch, I use the saw, but I don't try to cut the quarter inch perfectly. I cut it a little bit away from the line, cut the whole thing, and then I go back and fine tune it with my planer and make it nice. Right there, I can see there's kind of a high spot. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hit that high spot with the planer. So any place where there's high spots, I wanna hit those first and get it kind of even. Then I can just work long, even strokes to get the whole thing down low. So see there's a little bump right here, so I'm gonna hit this first. I have the planer on the lowest setting. This looks pretty even right to here, so I'll do one pass right to here first. Do not be intimidated if you've never used a power planer. The planer playlist has a complete set of lessons to show you how to use a planer like a pro. Now you can see, even though it's not at the line, it looks pretty even with the line. So I'll do one or two passes to get it down to that line. really close to the line. We don't have to get it perfect. When it's real close like that, just stop. So with that set, I'll put a nice bevel on it. So before we take this hinge off, we'll make a mark right here where the edge of the jam is. Because we want the edge of our door to be on the edge of this jam when it's installed. Take this hinge pin out and just remove that this half of the top hinge. So we know our hinge is gonna go right here. So we check our measurements. There's six and five eighths, we have a mark. There's 37 and nine sixteenths. There's 68 and nine sixteenths. So we're gonna put our hinge right here with the top of the hinge, even with our mark. These marks that we made here for the edge of the jam, those are gonna line up with the edge of the door. And when we have all that in place, then we trace our hinge. Steady. It's like that. It's like that. Router bit set to the correct depth so it only cuts as deep as this hinge. Since I know this is the pin side of my door and this is the top, I double check and make sure this is my top measurement. And then that, that's set up so that the pin is over here. And I know, because I've been doing this so long, when I'm mortising the hinges, I always want to stand on the opposite side of the tape. My fingers should always be touching the tape side, so that's how I know I'm set up correctly. So before I actually mortise, I always make sure my tape side is away from me, and then I just triple check all my measurements, and we're good. And now I'm going to mortise these in the exact way that I explain in the mortising with a router video. People ask me about hinge mortising jigs because there are so many different types. Pete, why don't you use a hinge mortising jig? I do, but very rarely because they aren't necessary. This is all gonna come out great and you don't need a hinge mortising jig. It's just more stuff you gotta carry and more time you gotta take setting things up. This is quick and easy and accurate. So I'm looking for three things. I wanna make sure that the the hinge is flush with the door. It's not too low, it's not too high. I wanna see that these lines line up with the edge of the door. And then lastly, my measurement from here to the top of my hinge is supposed to be six and five eighths. So instead of six and five eighths, let's imagine I'd cut that at six and three quarters. I would just move it, you know, I would just cut it more. And it doesn't matter if a little bit shows like that. It's best to have all the, the issues on the hinge side because they're the easiest to hide and no one ever sees them. So I'm gonna do the same thing here, but I'm not gonna mortise the exact lines. I could, but I'm gonna go just outside the lines a little bit. 
Remember, when we get ready to test hang this door, this plate is gonna be attached to the top. And then when we come in, it's just gonna hang right there. And then these hinges have to line up. So if I'm off just a little bit, these are not gonna line up. So when I mortise the middle and lower hinge, instead of making it perfect, I go just outside a little bit high and a little bit low on each line. When you get really good at these, you can do them perfectly. But especially when you're starting out, give yourself a little wiggle room, make it easy on yourself. Now see how that's got a little bit of room to move. So that'll be just fine. Do not worry about getting your hinge locations and mortises perfect. That will come with time, the more you do it. They're very forgiving. You'd be surprised how far off they can be and still work. So I'm at six and five eighths. So I'm just gonna put in two screws and I use the centering bit. Only two, cause that's all I need to hang it. And if I have to move this hinge, I wanna have fresh wood in these holes to move the screw. I want these hinges in the closed position. I have my wedge over there so I can wedge the door into position. I have my driver and my drill ready to go with screws on the side where I'm going to be screwing it in. So I'm gonna open the hinge like that. So this is where I want everything placed. I keep my hinge pin right here in my tool belt. So I carried the door in with that in mind. I have the hinge right here. It can get tricky with really heavy doors, or really big doors. I've just got the hinge on there. You don't have to get it all the way down in. I'm gonna move it around and get my wedge underneath it. There, now I've got it on the wedge. And you have to get the door open to 90 degrees. If I only had the door open to here, I'm not able to access the screws. So you see now I can get to the screws. So that thing just flipped right into place. And that one went right into place. Let's put one screw in the bottom first, because that's generally all it takes to hold the door. There. That door's not going anywhere. So this is the first test. And at this point, you always hope it works perfectly, but we're aware that it probably won't. And this is where we figure out what we need to do next. Now look at that gap along the edge. Oh my gosh. I hate to show you this because they never come out that perfect. <laughs> Look at this. Wow. When you're doing your first test bit like this, there is always at least one issue. More often there are multiple issues. And the troubleshooting video part one explains what those issues are and the sequence in which you should fix them. So once you've done a test fit, you wanna get the top and bottom of the door fit first. You want that eighth inch gap on the top of the door and no rubbing. And you want the bottom of the door as close to the floor as possible without rubbing. Then you move to the sides. If the door is rubbing or doesn't fit, you're going to have to plane the door. If the gaps are too big, you may have to manipulate the hinges. Then lastly, you work on the alignment. You wanna get the door flush with the jam. That's the gist of it. Review the troubleshooting video so that you can learn what to do during this step of the installation. Also, during the troubleshooting phase, be prepared for a lot of trial and error. It is not uncommon to take the door off Take it outside, shave it, put it back in, test fit it, take it down again, shave it, test fit it. I have taken doors on and off and shaved them 10 times in one job. Sometimes you get it right the first time. Sometimes you only have to take it off one or two times. Sometimes it seems like it takes forever. Just take your time, do it in little steps, till that door fits and works perfectly. So before we do any fine tuning, let's put the rest of our screws in and then check everything again. This looks good, so this fits. We're gonna install a door bottom. And we also have to figure out where our locks are gonna go. Since they have this unusual casing, I've got this piece of tape here 
and I want to find out where the middle of the strike plate is. And right there. So now with the door closed, I just transfer those marks over and right to there. I know that the back set is two and three eighths, so I'm gonna mark those. So that's where I'm gonna drill my locks. And these are where my bolts are gonna go. And with the inch and three quarter door, the center is seven eighths. Now, some thresholds do not require a door bottom, but that's very rare. Remember, you can't just have raw wood rubbing against wood or metal. There has to be a gap there or something's gonna fail. And if you have a gap there, people don't like that. And it also does not protect the bottom of the door. We're gonna use a door bottom, also called a door shoe. And this has a rubber strip that goes on the bottom of it. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut it to length. We want this door bottom to be the width of the door. So I just set it up there and then make a mark here on the end so that it's the exact width of the door. I'm gonna make a line here because I know the weather stripping goes right to there. And I don't want my door bottom to hit that weather stripping. So this line right here, that's how long my door bottom's gonna be. And then this line right here, I'm just taking off basically this section so that it doesn't hit against the weather stripping. I prefer the angle grinder with a cutoff blade. It's the easiest. You see where we cut those edges so it goes around the weather stripping. So now we'll insert the rubber strip and check our height. Once these rubber strips are in here, they can slide around sometimes. So I like to pinch that little channel there with the pliers. Take my razor knife and trim it. So you got that at the right length and I pinch these as well. So now that I know my door bottom is the right size, and I've got the rubber strip, I'm just setting it on the threshold to figure out where the bottom of the door needs to be. So the bottom of the door is gonna be right here. So with this thing in place, I got my rubber strip on, and it's just sitting on the threshold. I'm just gonna put my pencil in there and make a mark. So that is where the bottom of the door has to be. I'm gonna make that mark on both sides. And notice that mark is not exactly at the metal. It's a little bit above it because you don't want to cut it too close because you don't want to have to do this twice. It doesn't matter if you cut your door perfectly the first time and it doesn't matter if your threshold is level or not. So I'm going to transfer so I know I need to cut it right there and I need to cut it right there. So now I'll take the door off and I'll draw a line from mark to mark and I'll just cut it off and I know that's gonna be perfect and I'll drill my locks. So before I take my door off, I wanna make sure I have a clear pass so I'm not tripping over anything. And I'm gonna cut the door bottom first. So I have that set up. I'm just gonna set the door down there, cut the bottom, then I can flip the door on its side and do the locks. So I'm using the bottom I cut off the door. You might be thinking, Pete, why are you cutting the door twice? It seems like an extra step. You could cut it perfect the first time, but when you're starting out, I say be cautious because if you cut it too short, you might have to buy a new door. If you cut it a little long, you just take it off and cut it a second time. Always be safe. It's better to be too big than too small my lock positions marked sometimes i like to put a little pilot hole in there now i'm not going to go through the entire lock installation process because that is covered in the locks playlist and this could be done with the door in place you do not have to take the door off and take it outside again but when I'm doing entry doors like this, I like to cut the door bottom last and cut it outside and then drill my locks outside because they get so messy. So I just prefer to keep the mess outside. But sometimes if a door is really big and heavy or if I'm tired or if it's on the third floor or it's just too hard to move, 
I'll just leave it in place and do the locks with the door in place. Okay, we got our door back on and now you should have all of your screws in your hinges. First thing we're gonna do is install the locks. If you've done these properly, this should be very easy. One of the things I stress in my lock installation video is how locks need to be balanced and they need to move freely. See, I just have the screws in finger tight at this point. See how much I can move the lock? If I push it up like that and then crank the screws down real tight, it's not gonna work. Lock just wants to find its happy place where it works, where everything moves freely and easily. So when it comes to locks, you never wanna crank anything down. You just wanna make screws snug. Like, see that? If I turn that, that lock goes, ah, thank you, that's perfect. There. Perfect. So now we can put on the door bottom and we're done. So for these door bottoms, this rounded edge faces out so that it sheds water. And you should be able to slide it up. Some of these fit better than others. So when you put the door bottom in, you just want to push it down. And I, I generally use this, something like this. And I just tap on it until it hits the threshold. Then I put screws in there and it's done. That is how you install a slab door. So now that you've seen how to do this, you have the video, you have the steps, here's the best way to practice. Start with an interior door, a hallway, a closet, a bathroom in your house or apartment. Take your existing door, pop it off the hinges, set it aside someplace safe. Go to Home Depot or Lowe's, buy the least expensive hollow door in that size, and then practice all of these steps and try it out. With a new door, you should be able to do it maybe between two and four times per door. You can even find an old door and practice with that. If you follow these steps and practice my lessons, you'll be able to do this. So leave me a comment, ask a question. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, thanks for watching.